Thank you, Lord. We give God praise this morning. We worship God of heaven and earth. I exalt you, King of glory. I adore you, eternal God. I thank you for today. I thank you for the family of God. I praise you for all the people that you have given me grace to share this word with. I pray that the blessings of heaven will come upon your life. I pray that the grace of God will speak for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that glory will fill your life and testimony will fill your mouth in the name of Jesus. So today I will be taking us on a study on what is man. This is a Bible passage. We're looking at what is man, what man is. Generally, we all came to this world to find ourselves in a beautiful environment. And we need to ask ourselves, what is the purpose of our creation? Why did God create us? What is man? And our text is taken from Psalm 8 verse 4. It says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? If you do have your Bible there, I'll be glad you open it. Psalm 8 verse 4 clearly tells us what man is. And it says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast put crown him with glory and honor. Praise the Lord. So God created man and crowned him with glory and honor. And then we also see the same question was asked in the book of Job. Job chapter 7 verse 17 and 18. John's Job 7, 17 and 18. I read, it says, What is man that thou shouldest um, magnify him, that thou shouldest set thy heart upon him? And thou as, uh, shouldest uh, visit him every morning and try him every moment. What is man? God visits man. God try man. God place man in position. God puts man in the place of honor. So we're also going again to read Psalm 144. Psalm 144 verse 3. Psalm 144 verse 3, God's interest in man cannot be substituted. God created man for a divine purpose. God created man to give him glory. God created man. God is so interested in this creation called man. Man is not an animal that was formed out of the dust that was ordered to come into existence. God took time. To create man. Psalm 144, verse 3 said, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and he is greatly to be uh, is, is unsearchable. God is great and is unsearchable. So I'm sorry, that should be Psalm 144, verse 3 is where I'm going. Psalm 144, verse 3 says, Lord, what is man that thou makest, takest knowledge of him? Or the son of man that thou makest account of him what is man that god takes knowledge of man so you've also asked that question what is man why am i here why did god create me what am i supposed to be doing all these questions do come to our mind as human being but god created us for a purpose and also in the new testament hebrews chapter 2 Verse 6, the writer Paul made us to uh, refer to this question that was asked in the Old Testament. So we see that man always eager to know who am I? Why did God create me? Where do I come from? And there have been so many theories about man, so many lies that the devil raised in the heart of men about man's existence. But only in the word of God can we find the truth about man and his existence. So you must always know that the word of God is the final authority. No matter what human says, the word of God is the final authority. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 6 tells us, But one in, his, in certain places 
testify, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? So what is man that God is so interested in this creation called man? The is beholding the glory of the heavens as a question, what is man? Why is man so special in the sight of God? Have you also considered why are you so special in the sight of God? What is man that God takes a new interest in man? Everything that God created was created for man. God created this beautiful world and placed man in it. Genesis chapter 1 tells us that God created man. Man was the last of the creation of God. After God had created all things, after he had made a beautiful world, he saw the need to create a being to be in charge of the world. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 tells us the foundation of truth about man and the creation of the world. Genesis chapter 1, reading verse, uh, verse, verses um, 26 to 28. Genesis 1, 26 to 20. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the elves, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So this is it. God created man, and you are a creation of God. God creates you for his own glory and for his own praise. God created you to bring praise to God. You are a created being. Man is not an animal. No matter the theories that they taught, uh, the scientists try to prove that man comes from animal. No, man is not a product of animal. Man is not a product of evolution. Man is a created being. God created man in his own image, in his own likeness. God created you and I to be in his own image. Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Genesis 2 7. Look at the echo of truths in the word of God. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nursery the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Always all the truth. The truth is God created man from the dust of the earth. We are God's creation. We are God's creation. He made us. He created us. Out of the dust of the earth, we are the product of his hand. And God took time to create man, not like every other creation that he made. Looking through Job also, the book of Job 33, Job 33, Job 33, reading verse 4. We read Job 33 verse 4. The Spirit of God hath made me. And the breath of the Almighty had given me life. The Spirit of God had made me. So you are created being, you are created by God, and the Spirit of God created you. You come into existence by an act of the Holy Spirit. And so you are a created being by God. God created you for his own glory. Revelation chapter 4 tells us further that you and I are created being so man is created by god and that is the truth of the scripture man is not a product of evolution man is not a product of uh, uh, of theories that men try to say 
God created man. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. And thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, power, for thou hast created all things, man included, and for thy pleasure they were created. So God created all things for his own pleasure. So man is created by God. You and I are created by God. And we exist by his grace. We exist to worship him. We exist to adore him. I pray you will fulfill the purpose of God for your creation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 139, Psalm 139, reading verses uh, 14 to 16. Psalm 139, verse 14 to 16. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My, sub my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in the secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth, that thy eyes did see me a substance, yet being unperfect, and in the book all my members were written, which is continuously fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. Praise the Lord. You are a created being. You are created by God. You are created to bring glory to God. You are created to worship God. God knows you from the birth when you are yet in your mother's womb. He knows what you will be, what your future is. Your destiny is in the hand of God. And therefore, you must always come back to God. Ask God for direction for your life. Ask God what you need to do. You need to know that without God, there's no you. And that's why you must always worship him, reference him, adore him. And when you come to challenges in your life, you go back to God who created you. Uh, you have your car. I have my car. Even you have your phone. You have your laptop. And whatever you device you use to see me or read this lesson or study this study shows that is a product of somebody. Somebody bring those products to existence. And when you need to look at some challenges or troubleshoot some problems that you are having with the product, you go back to the maker, to the product maker who makes it. So you need to go to God for the challenges you are facing, for the troubles that face your life. God knows the solution to your problem. He has solution to every difficulty. Psalm 104, verse, um, Psalm 104, verse 30. Psalm 104, verse 30. God created us for his own glory, and he knows everything about us. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his work. I pray God will rejoice over your life in the name of Jesus. God by his spirit creates the world. God by his spirit bring man into existence. God by his spirit make man a living soul. And so we must always appreciate God. We must always serve God knowing that we are from him and by him and we are created for his own glory. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 11, verse 9. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. So that tells you and that confirms to you again that God created man and he created us male and female. God created man, male and female. And you are created, whether you are a woman or a man, God took time to bring you into the world. God took time to bring you into existence. And because he created you, he has a destiny for you. He has a specific plan for every one of us. He knows why you are here. You are not here by accident. You are here on purpose. And therefore, you must understand that God created you. Look at Isaiah Chapter 45, verse 12, he says, I have made the earth, God made the earth, created man upon it. I, even I, my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts 
have I commanded. So God said, I curated the heavens. I curated the earth. I formed man. Hallelujah. God formed man. So God said in Genesis, when you look at the theory or the truth of the word of God in Genesis, we see that God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. God said the Elohim, the three in one said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. And when you look at that word, you, there are two words used in that place, that Genesis account of creation, that's worthy of consideration. The words curated and the word made, we found in Genesis 1, 26 and 1 to 3. Now, the word curate means to make something out of nothing. To bring into existence a non-existing thing, something that had never existed before. Man was never in existence before God created man. So God created man who had never existed before. God said, I want to create a being that will serve me. I want a being that will worship me. God creates and brought into existence. He make means to fashion to form a potter like a potter forms a vessel of clay thus god created man on the earth and god breathed into him the breath of life and so man became a living soul man is a created being he owes his existence to god the creator and sustainer of all things i want you to know that god loves you and jesus died for you on the cross of calvary he loves you for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I want to assure you that there is a purpose for your life in destiny. I want to assure you that God has a purpose for your life. No matter the confusion you are passing through presently, no matter those things that are challenging your life, the love of God is that he loves you, he cares for you, and made his son to die for you. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. I thank you for your word that I share with the people of God. Whatever time they are watching this video, I pray that grace will speak for them. I pray that favor will come upon them and they will discover the purpose for which you created them. And they will know the Lord Jesus Christ, your son, that died for them. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.